All right, ready for some survival pukes? Good, let's start with the hardest shit knife and cut up some goddamn vegetables because they're part of a healthy diet. And if you want to survive, you gotta eat right, maggot. <clears throat> in my tireless quest to get more clicks, as in getting at least 20% of the people who subscribe to watch the videos, shit, I'd be happy with 15%, I have arrived at Survive Knives. I didn't intend for that to rhyme. Like the wait time of custom knives, but in a production knife, survive knives. Hey, Mastrop, hold my beer. So Amazing Blade Forms put the whole subform in a museum. In its museum. I could go on for a while, but Cedric and Ada warned me about the survive fanboy backlash on Instagram, and plus those are all just basically variations on the same joke. Sorry, no one ever said this was high art. However, when a subscriber sent me a DM on IG and said I could basically do anything I wanted to the knife, I said, sold. Er, borrowed. That was in 2015, and I just got it last month. Okay, that's it, I swear. He just sent me a thing about a month ago. The knife seen in this video is the GSO 4.7. In most of Survive's line, the numbers correspond to either the wait time in years or the blade length in inches. Okay, it's the latter. And before we think collectively, if this is the right brand to actually get me more clicks, and maybe I should just stick to pointing a camera at myself guzzling Zimas, let's look at the overall length and weight with and without the sheath. Finally, my Honey Badger review eclipsed the Zima in views, which is great because this isn't a Zima channel, or maybe I should just change it to Advanced Zima Bro. Who knows? Blade size, cutting edge. Although if you look at the 10,000 views on my Okapi video, who did I have to fuck to do that? I wish I could tell you, but I don't remember anything after the Zimas. Handle size, grip area. I waited six months to do that video because I thought no one would watch it. I make really good decisions. Spine thickness, handle thickness, and probably my way off behind the edge measurement. One time some guy said I was like two tenths of a millimeter off and that was way off and I was wrong. His was different. I guess we should talk about the featured knife in the video, right? And cuss less. AKB keeping it an R due to language, crotch shots, and talking in the third person. The Survive Knives GSO 4.7 is their survival knife from their GSO line that has a blade length of 4.7 inches. Survive says their GSO line are their premium knives made from the absolute best materials available like micarta and steel. The 4.7 is no longer made, so now that I say that out loud, maybe the problem with my clicks is me. Hmm. The 4.7 features a blade made from Crew Forge 5, which is a steel sort of comparable to 52100 or 01, but looks like it's no longer made other than dead stock or their Survive knife that just came in the mail. I see mentions on the internet as early as 2010 and as late as 2017, plus or minus five years. I'll link a data sheet from Steel Nerds in the description that gives you plenty of details about Crew Forge 5, which should work as a sex repellent if you read it out loud. The drop point blade has a flat grind, which is coated. I have no idea what it's coated with, but currently says they don't use coatings because they haven't found the right one. So whatever the coating is on this blade, at least we know it wasn't the right one. However, it does hold up pretty well. My guess is a DLC or some sort of coating that's not textured. Occasionally, people bring up in my comments on knife grinds, specifically the saber grind. Hey, could this be a saber? Oh, I like that saber grind. I personally, and it's just me, don't like to use the term saber grind because it kind of has a broad definition, like review, and I really don't like to sound like I know what I'm talking about. I noticed that Blade HQ's website generally doesn't use it either on their product sidebar section, so I learned it from them. Here, look at the Delica 4 Sabre page. It says Sabre in the description. Notice the sidebar says flat. Now, according to this definition of the Sabre grind from A.G. Russell's website, one of many I have forced myself to read for no reason, there are opinions involved in what is a Sabre grind. And that said, it can still be either flat or hollow. And then is a Scandinavian grind a Sabre with an edge bevel? Or is a saber grind a Scandinavian with a secondary bevel? If a true Scandinavian grind has a secondary bevel, but it's put onto it by an asshole with a sharp maker, and it didn't come with it, is it still a Scandinavian? And if companions have a secondary bevel, they can't be true Scandinavians, can they? Now, Blade HQ, you're on notice. Anyway, since there's a clear difference between a flat grind and a hollow grind, that's how I'll refer to them. Now I have a headache. The handle, it's nice. The guy who loaned it to me said, 
He likes the palm swell, a term he introduced to me, but I'm sure everyone else watching already knows about it. it means it has a little more love in the midsection, like me after 20 years of beers, and fits your palm better. The Micarta scales and the handle are extremely comfortable, like boxer shorts, a new video game, a quiet house, and a 12-pack of PBR. The one drawback to the palm swell is maybe your palm ain't like everyone else's. I mean, that's what I like about it. Also, the swell works well for mine. And of course, the scales are removable like they should be on any decent knife and work well if you're wet or dry. Grip is large enough for my hand and should work well for larger hands too. Probably even the smaller ones, God, God bless them. The sheath, hey, at least it comes with one, okay? Just spend like 10 to $30 outfitting this sheath with a clip that keeps it from hitting midway up the rib cage like a drop clip. Or stop whining and just have a custom one made, okay? It's only a $250 knife. What were you expecting, cheapskate? Okay, so I'm a little miffed that a mid $200 production knife doesn't come with a bit of extra hardware to make it an easier pull for humans and not just T-Rexes. Or biped with mucous membranes, Ted Cruz. It's Kydex and has a pop, very similar to my Essie's Laser Strike. You can always put it in your pocket, though. Comparisons. All jokes aside, there's a good reason why they have such a big fan base. It's a really nice knife. Like, I really want to buy one. I have a custom big-ass knife that I'm waiting to buy later this year. Maybe. We'll see if I'm still on the list. But I'm tempted to get on the waiting list for one of these. When I posted some of the pictures on Instagram, Survive posted saying they are working with Millet now and should improve wait times and have a lot of the problems solved with manufacturing delays. But the knife is sharp. It's held its edge very well to abuse. It's comfortable, nice blade shape, removable Micarta handles, all things I've said before. And since they use 3V, their mid $200 price range puts it in the Bark River or LT Wright territory. Every knife guy's a steel snob nowadays. However, something nice like the, I don't know, Laser Strike from Essie is also nice. About a hundred bucks, had to buy a clip for it, but even with the nice mounting system, it should still set you back less than 150. Although I think I prefer the handle on the Survive slightly more. I like the looks of the Survive 4.7 better. And how about the K-Bar Dog's Head Utility Knife that comes with the drop sheath? See how easy that is, everyone? 60 bucks. Longer blade, easy to sharpen, not full tang though, just sort of tang. I'd take the Survive if money was no object or I had a problem managing my own money. Fall Knife in S1, $150 with the sheath. I'm still not good at sharpening convexes yet, so I'd probably stick with the Survive. Although both are pretty nice and can handle a good pounding, if you know what I mean. Buck 119, yeah, finally got a buck thanks to subscriber Mark Tudor and gonna review in a few weeks. Look for this comparison section again when that video drops. You know how long these videos take to make, right? You know what, at least I'll re-edit it, okay? It's cheap and nice, made in the USA, 50 bucks-ish. It's lighter too, not a full tang though. It's like a most a tang, mostly tang. Now my heli, sorry, now my hella GT. I know it took it easy on this knife in the video, so sorry. However, judging by the views that video currently has while writing this, no one gave a fuck anyway. I guess Curly Birch isn't the new Tamascus after all. Surprise, I'm wrong about something. Are we done? No, YouTube is purgatory and I'm doomed to make videos only a handful of people appreciate until I'm old, senile, and my wife has taken away all my knives. At that point, I'll just point the camera at my face and eat meatloaf. Meatloaf reviews. I feel like meatloaf videos probably have a good audience built in already, right? Who doesn't like a dried hamburger without buns? You can even put ketchup on the top. Mmm, warm ketchup with skin. Knives, Mark, knives. If you can handle the weight, and if Survive truly has their shit sorted out, go for it. Look for the blade size you want, because they have several. Sign up for their newsletter, and you get an email telling you when you can order the knife, or something like that. I think I understand it. There's 11 knives on their GSO series page right now. You can pre-order or order one. No delivery estimate, and it's currently just a CAD mock-up. I like the 4.7 inch size, might go with five or five and a half because there's not a reason to really own a big ass fixed blade other than to beat up on it. I'm impressed with the quality and attention to detail and I still might order one. 5.1 maybe, how about the seven? Maybe the seven because I'm not that rational. I can just feel my elbow acting up as I talk about it. If you like this sort of review, subscribe to the channel, donate to the Patreon, which gets you precisely nothing other than keeping me from going in the hole too much on these videos. Think of it as a charity, but to someone that already has a job and makes, you know, bad decisions from time to time. It's like HBO Go, but with one thing on that doesn't involve boobs or dragons. 
However, if you look close enough, you can see my nipples poking through my shirt. So maybe that counts for something. Comment, click that bell, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, follow me home from the grocery store if you're a creep. Hey, remember I have lots of knives, so watch out. That wasn't a threat, it was just, I, I do own a lot of them for some reason. Thanks for watching.